Let's talk about transactions in Prisma. So transactions, a database concept, allow you to make sure that either all of your writes, let's say, or maybe a read and a couple of writes, something like that, make sure that all of them succeed or none of them succeed. So you can imagine this is useful if you need to make multiple different requests, maybe even do some work in between those requests and make sure that every single one of those writes or every single one of those operations is going to succeed. Otherwise, just cancel the whole thing. Now, if you're just relying on your app code itself to do some reads and do some writes and maybe do some work in between, there's a lot that could go wrong and you might end up in a state where some of your writes are going to succeed and others are going to fail. Let's take a look at an example of this here. I've got this very basic schema set up. I can go over to schema here. I've just got a user, a post, a profile, and a comment. And the situation that we're going to try to demonstrate here is how things can go wrong if we don't use transactions. So to begin, let's take a look at the success case. So I've got a write to a profile here. I'm creating a profile. And then after, right after, I'm creating a post. So you can imagine this might be something that happens when you first create a new profile for a user in your application. Maybe the user signs up, they go through the sign up flow, and then there's going to be a profile created for them by default, and then maybe a first post here, just an initial post for that user. So over in the database, I have got this user here. Here's me. There's nothing associated to me in terms of a post yet, and there's no profile here either. So let's go over here to our app code, and we're just going to do npm run dev. And once we do that, we've got two records written. We've got the profile, and then we have got that first post. So for over here, we can check things out and we'll do a little refresh and there we go there's the profile and then we've got the post as well so everything looks good now let's say that we had something occur where there was an error in fact before we even demonstrate that I'm just gonna go ahead and delete what I've got here let's delete that and then we're going to go and delete that post as well all right, good. So we're back to a starting state now. And so what we want to demonstrate now is what happens in our app code here if there's an error of some sort. This is a very kind of trivial example because we get type safety from Prisma here. There's not a whole lot that can go wrong, at least when we're writing our app code. But let's say that, for example, we tried to connect this post here to a user that doesn't exist. So for whatever reason, a bad ID came in for this second operation. As it stands, if we go ahead and do npm run dev, we're going to have this big error thrown here. But what we get over here in our database is we get that profile created, but we do not get any post here created. So something succeeded, but the other thing failed. And this is a bit of a contrived example. This might not be a very big deal in your application, but it goes to show that if there were sequential writes that needed to happen, but one of them failed, it could be a big deal depending on the needs of your application. So let's try to remedy this with a transaction. Prisma provides this transaction API that we access through dollar transaction. And the way that we're going to write things in this case is through what's called a sequential transaction. And that looks like this. We're going to give ourselves a constant of, and it's going to be an array, where we're going to go for profile first, and then we're going to go for post second. There's Copilot helping me out. And that's going to be await prisma.dollarTransaction, where we are going to open up an array. And within this array, that's where we're going to put our calls to Prisma. I'm going to go ahead and grab this bit here all the way from prisma.profile.create to the end. I'm going to get rid of everything else. We don't need that. We're going to put this call into our first spot here. Prisma.profile.create. And then we're going to grab the other one where we are creating the post. And get rid of all this. And this is going to go after prisma.profile.create. So we got prisma.post.create, and now we are accessing those through this destructured array here, profile and post coming through. Let's go ahead and set ourselves up for the success case. So for example, we can go over here to our profile and delete this one profile just to set ourselves up at a clean state. We'll make sure this is saved and we'll go ahead and do npm run dev. There's our two records being created. So we will just make sure that we've got them. There's our profile. There is our post. Good to go there. Now let's simulate that error case again. So we're going to put in ID number two there. Let's again go and delete this record and this one too. Back over here in our app, we've got ID two. That user doesn't exist. And so because we're using a transaction, 
everything should be rolled back to the initial state, meaning there will be no data created at all. npm run dev to try this out. We get our error. And over here, do we have a post? We don't have a post. Do we have a profile? We do not. So in the before case, we were getting that profile written when it really shouldn't have been written. That is really what we wanted is unless both the profile and the post can be created, we shouldn't create either of them. And now that we're using a sequential transaction with Prisma, we are able to get that behavior operating like we want it to. So transactions are great if you have sequential rights or maybe some work in between that needs to happen before any of those records can truly be committed. You can use a transaction to set that work up in the database. And then if anything goes wrong along the way, everything will just be rolled back to its initial state. We're using sequential transactions here, which means one thing happens, then another, and then another. It doesn't give us an opportunity here to be able to do other work in between these Prisma calls, but Prisma does have a feature called interactive transactions, which allows us to have more flexibility there. And we're going to take a look at that in another video.